you the first time we came here. Oh, Paimon remembers. Nahida's consciousness had been trapped by the doctor, but we followed the clues she left behind to help her. So much time has already passed since then, and it seems Sumeru is changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Paimon just hopes this peace will last a long time, and then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. Yeah, guess you're right. Hmm. We somehow always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. Huh? Me? Before Paimon ran into you, Paimon never ran into any trouble. At most, when she was super tired, Paimon got caught in some strange whirlpool and sucked out into sea. And even then, you fished Paimon out! <sighs> anyway, for Nahida's sake, maybe we should think about heading to our next destination for now. Ah, look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. Oh, it's Dia! Hmm, since when are we just wandering around? We're usually taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there. Chatting away. What were you two talking about anyway? Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry, we'll come back to see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? Oh, wait a sec. Paimon just remembered there are still a few dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where is that list Paimon made? Hmm... I see. Guess you won't be needing a going-away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? Oh! Good point. No need to bother her in the real world. Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Goodbye, dear. Bye-bye, Sumeru.
all that sand and water, we finally made it! Oh, this must be Fontaine's port! Wow! Everything looks so... advanced in Fontaine! Paimon's heard that the industry here is extremely developed, and there are all kinds of unusual machines! Just seeing the sights as a tourist is nice, but... Maybe it would be better if we found something to do! What do you think? Good idea! Nahida gave us loads of useful information! Seeking out the seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Yeah! The more we can learn, the better! So... What do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahida said that she has a very unique personality, whatever that means. To learn about a nation's god, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party. If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. We're travelers, new to Fontaine, and we had something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. A <laughs> uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously than that? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things, it's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellette, as well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. Pure trees? Is it some kind of machine, too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Wait, Paimon almost forgot to ask you our question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Huh. <laughs> I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, didn't you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. Huh. 
First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets it now! The Hydro Archon is kinda like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellet. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of laws here. But nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. Alright, I think we get it. Thank you! At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey! What are you looking over there for? Huh. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? No people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly, and the air was filled with the scent of the sea. But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> It won't be long before it swallows us. Uh... Sorry... Paimon doesn't really get what you mean. Ah, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and you are? Thanks for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister, Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is a traveler! We just arrived in Fontaine. We were just talking with your sister. Uh, even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Hmm, I see. It's unusual for Lynette to be so willing to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the one talking for some reason. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. Oh. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. Now, when she said that the water is engulfing your memories, and that it won't be long before it engulfs you, too. Oh, that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. 
Where to begin? Hmm. Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions earlier not count? Hello, Traveler. And hello, Paimon. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. Oh! Alright then. Well, Paimon's just happy to have a local friend now. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. Would you be able to show us the way? <sighs> so you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please, follow me. You said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. with cup in hand and those with nothing at all. Raise your glasses in celebration! If you don't have one, then just raise your hand in lieu. As you can all see, two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation. Come, let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and his companion, who have journeyed here from distant lands. Uh, is she talking about us? I've long heard of the turmoil and chaos you've left in your wake, as you visited other nations. But I welcome you nevertheless. No, I have come to receive you personally. Fear is for insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured. I see clearly your sincerity. Of course, seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct banner. I, Fosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Yeah, Hyman still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. But the Hydro Archon's entrance was, uh, how should Hyman describe it? A little... over the top? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, Miss Hydro Archon? How did you know we were coming? Ah, I see. As 
Those outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. You had best stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? All it takes is a flick of my finger for me to know everything about you. Whoa. Talk about sounding high and mighty. <laughs> oh? What's with these looks? Perhaps the welcoming ceremony still isn't enough? Hmm. What else should I say then? Uh... Is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise! Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not notice before? Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course! That's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are about. Lady Farina came here to personally see him. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. Oh, I've got to see this. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land, just as you were hoping to see. Uh, now she wants to fight? Aren't we getting a little ahead of ourselves? Not afraid? Might I remind you that this is a duel against the Divine? What are you trying to do, Traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? Ahem. Stand down, Clorend. I admire his bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. He is obviously a true warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement! Oh, yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. <sighs> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels to defend their honor. They're getting a bit old, to tell the truth. You see... Then, as the God of Justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! Whoa, all right! Now that'll be worth seeing! Right, this is Fontaine, after all. Such a grand opera house, it would be a pity not to use it. Why do you care so much about the crowd's reactions? Seems you've spent a little too much time in the opera house. Besides, how exactly do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Oh, so that's what they've done wrong. Mm, that's our Lady Farina. No one knows the laws of Fontaine like she does. You call that obvious? Flying object? <gasps> you mean Paimon? Precisely!
nicely. Now, if you two have no objections, then in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. My apologies, Lady Farina. I don't mean to spoil the fun. But if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. You tell her, Linny! Finally, someone who's not crazy. How could anyone call Paimon a flying object? Ah, great magician, Linny. My beloved citizen. I'll permit you to object. But how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. Ta-da! There. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. Huh? <laughs> you call that magic? <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. <laughs> amusing. Very amusing, Linny. Just the sort of unexpected twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? You see all this as a performance? In which case, consider the matter of your trial resolved. The God of Justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! for future Paimon. That whole scene just now was really... <sighs> Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation, just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So, now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Anyway... Paimon had no idea you were a magician, Linny. It sounded like you'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine. The Opera House. But isn't the Opera House where criminal trials are held in Fontaine? When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. And speaking of performances, I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. 
Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? My brother's always excited to make new friends. Oh, sure! We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway! Splendid! In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. Huh? What are they going to use it for? About that... Hmm... You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. That sounds pretty gloomy. Why are people in Fontaine born with sin? What is that supposed to mean? There are lots of guesses. Some say that the ancestors of Fontaine stole the power of the seas and stirred its wrath. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. There hasn't been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But in the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged and now lie beneath the sea. Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Oh! Hyman gets it! It's like preparing for a rainy day! But this is more than a bit of rain. Hmm. Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. What's this? So you also believe in the prophecy. <laughs> Keep it. I won't have any use for it. What? You mean, you don't believe in the prophecy? No, no, I believe in the prophecy. But I also believe in another story. The story says that people once lived in the ocean. They were one with the ocean and couldn't live apart from it. But as time wore on, people desired to live on land and developed blood vessels, encapsulating the sea within their bodies. Thus could people set foot on land. So, if you ask me, when the water rises and takes us all, it'll be like we're going home. Oh, 
We hadn't heard that one before. But people can't live underwater. They'll die. You should probably still take it. <sighs> All right, I'll take it. I guess I just feel that being dissolved into the water doesn't necessarily mean death. So you're the blonde traveler that everyone's been talking about. My apologies for not recognizing you earlier. Oh, a magic pocket? Seems you really thought of everything. I guess it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Thanks. Oh, please, also thank the magician on my behalf when you get the chance. I don't want that thing. The way I see it, if the prophecy's true, it's still gonna be a long time before the water can cover everything. Life is all about living in the moment. What use is there in worrying about the future all the time? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You should still take it. You never know when it'll come in handy. Oh, all right, fine. Thanks. It's just that... If I start moving, that means I've already given up on the life I have now. I'd really rather not. Oh? You already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hm. That was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some, uh, interesting opinions. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. Is there anything else you need to do before we leave? Yes, one last thing. I have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the Court of Fontaine. Since we're out and about, I was thinking about bringing him some more materials. So, you want to collect materials? Just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help! Many hands make light work! Oh, that would be much appreciated. We'll need some Romaritime flowers. I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor. You made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the Opera House. <sighs> Fine. Though the performance is still a long way off. 
Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. So, we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the Opera House? Good. Paimon wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try... Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl. Huh? What's wrong with her? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. Your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. All right, let's go. for a while now. Paimon wonders if Lenny caught the thief. Yeah, let's go. How long will it take if I set up? Are you sure that's all she took? 
You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no, that was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle, and I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be alright. It's just a twisted ankle, that's all. In fact, it's feeling better already. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Sorry, Lynette. <sighs> I have to admit that the thief was even more skilled than I had anticipated. But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. What a slippery little thief! Guess things turned out alright in the end, though. Lenny's initiative paid off! Alright, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now. This is an aqua bus. It allows people to travel between several key locations around Fontaine. It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. So you mean it's still boring even when I'm riding with you? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. It's just that, uh, well, you don't really talk that much. Besides, it doesn't really feel like a real trip when it's just the two of us. It's the same as being at home. <laughs> hmm. Whatever. Guess that's what it's like to be an older brother. <laughs> it's about time for us to leave. Let's get on board. riding the aquabus in the story of my life this is big news what are you doing in fontaine i didn't hear anything about you paying us a visit yeah it's quite the coincidence but as travelers we're always on the move it's not surprising that nobody knew we were coming uh though we still have no idea how the hydro archon knew about us oh let paimon introduce you to our new friends Oh, no need for introductions, Paimon. I would recognize the great magician Linny and his assistant Lynette anywhere. I wouldn't be much of a reporter if I didn't know who they were. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird. Nice to meet you. From the Steambird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. Now that everyone knows each other, Fontaine suddenly doesn't feel like such an unfamiliar place. So, what have you been up to lately, Charlotte? Any big news? Not too much. When there isn't any breaking news, I mainly cover the trials at the Opera House. You can still manage to keep readers' attention as long as you tell things from a clever enough angle, even if it's the same old topics. 
For example, reporting on how a scammer once deceived vulnerable girls into relationships, or how a financial criminal was once so poor that they ate a single piece of bread for five days. Ah, you're right. Seems you know me pretty well. What I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. These smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Oh, I just remembered. I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. You mean the serial disappearances of young women case? That's right! These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. If I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird! Oh! When that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't wait for the truth to be revealed! So, what is the... serial disappearances of young women case? You mean the culprit hasn't been found? That's right! The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age, and that they've all vanished without a trace. But the scariest part is that to this day, none of the girls have ever been found. Many suspects have been arrested over the years in connection with this case, but shortly after each arrest, another disappearance would always happen. Yes, it's possible. But either way, I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed! Yes, I agree. And at the very least, the family of those missing girls deserves some sort of explanation. <laughs> I just imagined for a second what I would do if Lynette were to suddenly disappear. I'd pay any price to get her back, and then find a way to track down the culprit. Please don't imagine that, Lenny. Enjoyed chatting with you. Life should be full of pleasant little surprises like this. Yeah, us as well. The ride went by too quickly. Oh, I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. Okay, Hyman hopes we can chat again soon, Charlotte. See ya! <laughs> Bye now. Oh, be sure to stop by and see me at the Steambird when you have time. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone? <sighs> well, where should we go now? If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? Besides, I still have all the materials we collected. Sure, we wouldn't mind at all. This city is so huge, Paimon wouldn't know where to start anyway.
This is our current abode. Ah, Fremine, your home. Where did everyone else go? I have some new friends that I would like to introduce. Oh, they all just went out a moment ago. I see. Everyone is getting busier now that Father will be returning soon. I suppose that can't be helped. Allow me to introduce you to my little brother, Fremine. He is a phenomenal diver. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Oh, you sound very proud to have a diver as a brother, Linny. <laughs> uh, Linny, could you come here for a moment? Hmm? What is it, Fremine? Do you have something to tell me? Hmm. Okay, I see. Is everything all right? Oh, it's nothing. We were just discussing a little housework. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, uh, before I forget, the Traveler and I collected more materials to make magic pockets. Were you able to get any, Fremine? Yes. I went diving and gathered lots of materials. I was about to give them to you. That's our Fremine, always quick with the underwater work. All right, I'll take these to the workshop. Hmm, looks like rain. Sure is weird. <laughs> I'm afraid that's just how it is here. It often rains on days where there are trials being held in the Opera House, but don't worry, it'll clear up soon enough. <sighs> hmm? What's wrong, Fremine? There's a legend about the rain that I tend to believe. It's said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Though we don't know where the dragon went, every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour out rain. When I was a child, my mother told me that if I wanted to go outside and play, I should yell toward the sky at the top of my lungs. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! If it's an elemental dragon, then having the power to make it rain wouldn't be very unusual. Hmm, let Paimon try something. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! Hmm? Hmm. Huh. Doesn't seem to be of any use. It is just a legend, after all. You know, you might be a more popular magician if you understood the concept of romanticism. Or could at least play along. <laughs> Sorry, it might be because we've never met the Hydro Dragon. Perhaps it can't be comforted by the words of strangers. Hmm, it rained for longer than I suspected. Oh, it's already getting late. Was there something you needed to do, Linny? Yeah, some preparations for the show at the Opera House. I need to find a way to catch the last Aquabus of the day. On the day of the performance, just ride the Aquabus to the island of Araneus. I'll have Lynette meet you at the fountain in front of the Opera House. Oh, uh, are you leaving now? What is it, Fremine? I'm in a hurry. Oh, I get it. You feel nervous delivering the materials for the Magic Pockets, is that it? Perhaps we could trouble the Traveler to help us take these materials to the Beaumont Workshop and deliver them to the owner there? 
I'm afraid that Fremine can be quite introverted. And the boss there tends to be pretty talkative. <laughs> Fremine has always been a little afraid of her. No trouble at all! Don't worry, we're on the case! Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm quite useless when it comes to such tasks. I'll think of a way to make it up to you. Oh, no need, no need. This will be a walk in the park for us. Thanks again, you two. I really can't deal with that lady. New customers? Looking to buy, or do you need something made? Or perhaps you're just looking for a chat with me. Oh no, we're just here to deliver some materials. Here they are. They're for making... Uh... What were they called again? Ah, these must be for magic pockets. I could tell right away. I've already made several orders worth now. No, no need. They've already prepaid several batches worth. When they told me what they'd be using them for, I even offered them a discount. But they insisted on paying the full amount, saying that I had a business to run. <laughs> it seems both their hearts and their pockets are made of gold. Wow. So, is Linny actually loaded? Mm, I can't say for sure, but who knows? Maybe there's good money to be made being a magician in Fontaine. Hey, is this machine what you use to make stuff here? It looks really advanced! Why use your hands when a machine can do the work? It would be a waste not to use the latest technology. And wasting is a kind of crime. But where does a big machine like that get its power from? Ah, uh, well... It's a little complicated. I'm not sure I can put it in layman's terms for you. But basically, everything we usually use here in the city is powered by indemnitium. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials. Huh? How can trials produce energy? Well, I'm not completely sure of all the details myself, but basically... When a trial is in session, the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinale harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into energy to be used all around Fontaine. So that's what its other function is? Hmm... Paimon heard that the Oratrice was created by the Archon to make judgments! But... Uh, Paimon still doesn't get it! How could something unreliable like people's beliefs be turned into a stable power source for these machines? Oh, yeah! So that means the Hydro Archon relies on the machine to take the energy created by belief and turn it into power for all of Fontaine, right? Even though I've never heard anyone really put it that way before, it sounds like it makes sense. Besides Indemnidium, we have another type of energy called Numusia. It isn't produced by the power of the Archon, but it is unstable by nature. Even now, it still cannot be widely used by civilians. <laughs> I thought I'd find you hard at work, but here you are chatting the day away. Since you're already talking, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a few words with me. Y you again? Didn't I already promise you that I'd have the more I owe to Conferry of Cabriere by next month? Why are you hounding me now? Yeah, but how do we know that you won't go running off by the end of this month? I want 50% today. Wait, no? 70%. Huh? You... Seems business isn't so great for the workshop. We've already finished our job and delivered the materials. Maybe now's a good time to leave? Hey, hold on! Before you go around trying to collect payments, why don't you settle your own debts first? If Confrary of Cabriere wants to poach clients from Northland Bank, that's fine. But I'm afraid you still owe the bank a hefty sum of more. 
So why don't we work things out between us first, before you get back to your little conversation here? Ah, uh, you're from Northland Bank. But we said we'll pay everything we owe next month. Why are you hounding me now? Uh, Traveler, Paimon! I didn't think I'd run into you here in Fontaine. What are the chances? We're surprised to see you too! What are you doing here in Fontaine? You didn't want to stay in Snezhnaya? <laughs> Long story short, I've already been in Fontaine for some time now. And honestly, things have been pretty boring. But it seems that fate brought our paths together today. Not only will I have some good friends here now, but ones who always seem to find trouble. Either way you look at it, it seems things are going to get a lot more interesting now. Pretty sure we'd want to avoid anything that you'd find interesting. Besides, our trip here has gone pretty well so far. Right, Trevor? <clears throat> uh, hey, you, Northland Bank boy. Aren't you forgetting something? Don't interrupt. It's not often I run into the Traveler like this. Why don't you wait for me over there for a while? Uh, you kidding? Aren't you the one looking for us? You really expect us to sit and twiddle our thumbs while you catch up with your friends? Listen to me, boy. If you want your Mora, fine. Why don't you come and take it? Hey, I just said not to interrupt. Oh, by the way, Traveler, the last time I took Tonya and Tuser ice fishing, Tuser said... Hey! That's way over the line! All right, boys! Let's see who has to pay up now! Uh, can you at least let me finish one sentence? Fine. Though the bank told me not to get rough with our clients. You're the ones who started it. This is an act of self-defense. <laughs> you two will have to be my witnesses, okay? I'm sure this won't take long. yourself this is gonna hurt yeah <laughs> tidal wave if you're just a staffer from Snezhnaya's Northland Bank! Wait, don't tell me you're... Uh... Oh, now you notice. It's a little late, don't you think? Just make sure you understand that you don't mess with Northland Bank. Got it? Uh, huh? Now's my chance! Huh. That was weird. I'm not sure. It's as if I suddenly lost control of my hydro powers when I needed them. Maybe there's something wrong with my vision? Strange. How could that happen? First time Paimon's ever heard of someone losing control of their vision. Never mind. It doesn't matter. If I want to stay sharp, I shouldn't be relying too much on my vision anyway. Besides, I always have my delusion in case I need it. So what are you doing in Fontaine, child? I don't see its work for Northland Bank. Well, I guess it's because I've been in a bad mood lately. Huh? What kind of reason is that? Wait, since when do you feel down about anything? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still have a lot to learn about myself. But recently, there seems to be some sort of restless power stirring inside of me. And I don't know why, but every now and then I feel like I'm in a terrible mood. Hmm. Maybe you losing control of your vision just now is connected with that power you're feeling inside. Hmm. That is a possibility. I can't remember if I ever mentioned it before, but when I was 14, 
I fell into some unknown abyss. It was during that time I learned nearly all of my abilities. The one who took me under her wing and taught me was named Skirk. She was always quiet and very mysterious. Nobody knew where she came from or what she had been through, and she was always very strict when teaching me combat techniques. One time, I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was... Because I had awakened it, and traces of it remained on me, she said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. But what is it? What did you awaken? She never explained that, but my guess is that it's related to a dream I saw when I had just fallen into that abyss. In my dream, I was in the deepest depths of the sea, and the boundless seabed was all around me. But in front of me appeared a whale that was so massive, I felt like I couldn't breathe. A whale? Oh, that sounds familiar! When we fought against you before, you summoned a huge whale that seemed to leap at us. Is that the one? <laughs> That's just an abstract form of a whale that I create using my elemental powers. It takes that shape because the scene I dreamt of the whale has always been stuck in my mind. I'll never forget it. So you used the whale as inspiration for one of your moves? Huh. Seems a little... So why don't you just go ask your master? Maybe she knows the answer. You make it sound so easy. Ever since the incident I experienced there, I've never stopped searching for Master Skirk and that unknown abyss. But it's been years now, and I've still found nothing. There isn't even a trace of the place where I remember falling into the abyss. Oh, it sounds like some kind of ghost story. Yeah, I'm out of leads at this point, but there's nothing more I can do. It seems that strange encounters in this world tend to be elusive like that. Oh, seems the time really flies when I'm talking with you. I just remembered I have somewhere else I need to be, so I should get going. What? More work for the Northland Bank? Uh, no, it's more of a personal appointment. Lately, I've been sparring with some of Fontaine's official champion duelists whenever I'm feeling bored. Official champion duelists? You mean it's their job to duel? Yep. In Fontaine, before a criminal goes to court, they're given one chance to defend their honor by requesting a duel with an official champion duelist. The champion duelists are all powerful fighters selected from among the nation's best, and the duel itself is a no-holds-barred fight with no specified stopping point. So engaging in such a duel is regarded as a symbol of defending your honor. If a criminal manages to win the duel, they'll be acquitted, but if they lose, they'll have no choice but to stand trial. And the worst case scenario is that you're simply killed in the duel. Though it's rumored that Fontaine has a death penalty, from what I can tell, no one has ever been officially sentenced to death. So really, the only people who opt to duel are those who have suffered a grave injustice in being accused, or those who greatly value their honor. Otherwise, why gamble with your life? So, do many people actually get out of their trials by winning the duel? Apparently, it's exceedingly rare for anyone to actually win. Fontaine probably enacted this system as a way to show that the nation respects the honor of its citizens. Besides, none of the champion duelists are to be trifled with, which is exactly why I was itching to face them as soon as I got to Fontaine. Apparently, the one I'm meeting today, Clorend, is the strongest of the champion duelists. I had been asking her for some time before she finally agreed to face me today. Well, that's child for ya! Hmm. Paimo feels like we heard that name somewhere before. Clorand. Huh. Oh, before I forget, I want you to have this. Huh? Your... vision? You're seriously just giving it away? I'm just worried that it could become uncontrollable again. I'd be pretty upset if it got in the way of my duel, so I think I'll be better off without it for now. Besides, I just need you to hold on to it for a short while. I'll come retrieve it when I have some time later. Hyman knows what you're up to. You just want an excuse to come talk to us again, don't you? 
<laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? I'll be in touch later. <laughs> that sneaky guy. He said he's been feeling down lately, but he seemed the same as ever to Paimon. <sighs> well, seems we don't have much to do for now. We might as well walk around and see the city before Lenny's performance. <laughs> The reporter who was barely around for most of the story was the murderer all along! Uh, sorry. Paima was just surprised, that's all. <sighs> Paima never saw that twist coming. The murder mystery novels here are amazing! The whodunits here in Fontaine are a lot different than the light novels you see from Yai Publishing House. Both have their merits, but... Paimon thinks this style of novels are more... Well, novel. It's so exciting to reach the moment when the mystery is uncovered, especially in the one Paimon was just reading. You should buy a copy and read it, too. Oh, sorry about that. Paimon will be more careful next time. Uh, hey. Shouldn't we be heading to the Opera House to see Linny's performance soon? It's almost time for the show to start, so we should get going. Lenny said that the Alpha House is on Aranias, so let's go ride the Aqua Bus! Welcome to the Navia Line. I am Elfan. The boat will be departing imminently. Please do not stick your head, hands, or other body parts outside the boat. The Aquabus operator is not responsible for any accidents or injuries resulting from doing so. Also, please remember to buy the Steambird, though I don't read it myself. The destination of the current tour is Erinias. Points of interest worth visiting include the Fountain of Lucene and the Opera Epicles. If you look to the left in the direction we are currently traveling, you will see the famous Fontaine Research Institute up in the sky. An experiment gone wrong turned new sightseeing opportunity. Human ingenuity truly is a wondrous thing. Approaching our final destination. Please be sure to bring all your personal belongings with you as you disembark. Even though I will take any forgotten items to the lost and found, the paperwork is rather annoying as Melazine hands are not suitable for grasping pens. Please be careful when disembarking. It has been my honor to be your tour guide this trip. Thank you.
forward to it. Huh. Looks like there's a lot of people standing around the fountain up ahead. Oh, Archon. Please bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray... I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fontaine. There sure are a lot of couples here. Vache. What's wrong? Vache. Vache. No, Paimon didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's customary for newlyweds to come here and wish for children. Ah! <gasps> Lynette! You scared Paimon! When did you get here? Mm, when he asked me to wait here for you, remember? Ah, right. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. Huh? Hey, you're not trying to scare Paimon, are you? Besides, it's the middle of the day! It's not the time for eerie things! Hmm, I see. I might be able to tell you something that could help explain the voice you heard. In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hypersensitivity to the hydro element. Others in my family have had similar experiences. It's because of his sensitivity to the hydro element? But what would hearing a voice have to do with elemental power? When do you cry, Paimon? Wait, what? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. When do you cry? Uh, when Paimon's really sad? Oh, and when Paimon's super happy. Oh, and also when Paimon's really, really scared. Then you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the tears that fall to the ground will eventually gather here. So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's tears. So, what did the voice say? Huh. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to them. Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't let that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before a performance. So chatting with Linny might help him relax a little before he goes on stage. Oh, right. That makes sense. Let's go in and see Linny. Welcome to the Opera Epicles. <laughs> Traveler and Paimon, good to see you. I knew you two would come. Are you kidding? We wouldn't miss it for the world. We've been looking forward to it. <laughs> I can tell, judging by how early you've arrived. But you're actually right on time. The audience still hasn't started entering the venue yet, which means now is the perfect chance for us to take you to the best seats in the house. Wait just a moment. I'll fetch the tickets. The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already reserved your seats, and here are your tickets. Ooh, front row seats! Thanks, Linny! 
Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Hey, Lenny! Could you come over here and take a look at this? Oh, I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cal, my assistant, calling me. I'll go lend him a hand. Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Lenny. conversation with the person next to us since we're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still it's kind of awkward if we don't say anything oh, you little... <laughs> of course you put this on Paimon excuse me I did not realize you felt awkward I am terribly sorry I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like so, you heard all of that, did ya? <laughs> Boy, you sure have good ears. Paimon thought she was keeping her voice down. Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon's... Sorry, um... Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking under her breath like that. Uh, so, let's talk, but, uh... What should we talk about? Uh... Oh, Paimon's got it! You're also here early and sitting in the front. Are you a friend of Linny's, too? A friend, you say? Well, if Mr. Linny would like to be my friend, I would be more than happy to reciprocate. Oh, so you're not friends with Linny, then? Oh, this is getting more awkward by the second. <laughs> ah, uh, Paimon nearly forgot to make her introduction. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. We just arrived in Vaudain. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across to that. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... Oh, Monsieur Nervillette! What an honor it is to have you here to see my show! Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Oh, wait. Nervillette? Could he be... Hmm? I saw you all chatting just now, but it seems you still don't know who Monsieur Neuvillette is. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. Ooh! Uh, sorry for being so rude just now. Paimon had no idea you were such an important person. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to. There's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a while now. I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. Otherwise, she may become... flustered. <laughs> huh? Oh! It's Farina, the Hydro Archon. Huh. She sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Guess she has no idea that you saw right through her act. 
Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now enjoy the show. Huh? So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. Yay! The show is finally about to start! Ooh, boy, I can hardly wait! Paimon's never seen a real live magic show before! Oh, they're dimming the lights! The show must be starting! Hmm. Sorry, Paimon will try to stay quiet. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. Whatever. Now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Oh, good point. That's what makes the show real magic. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. I know you might miss her, but don't worry. She'll be coming right back on stage momentarily. Perhaps in an unexpected way. I'm sure she'll be stealing the spotlight soon enough. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing I should say. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> but this isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Using this water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely, right before your very eyes. It's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. Oh no, I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage, so let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. <laughs> Lynette, are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi, I'm back.
inside the water tank? How did she disappear and then reappear out of nowhere? If we could see easily through his tricks, then that would mean that his skills are still lacking. To appreciate magic, you should focus on the show happening on stage, rather than getting caught up in trying to see that which has been intentionally hidden. Ah, guess you're right. Paimon couldn't believe her eyes when Lynette reappeared. Amazing! Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still my assistant, after all. In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. Please, if my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now... There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. <laughs> a swap! Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge from the opposite box. Now please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow! How's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks, or does Lenny have actual superpowers? The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, let me see. Oh, row 7, seat 3. Congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand for an entire minute. Please, come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. I'm sorry, it might be a little cramped inside, but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. You don't need to do anything, but no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up. You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, <laughs> okay... All right. Before I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh! Paimon kind of wants to count faster after hearing him say that! <laughs> no, no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. Come on, repeat after me. 60, 59, 58. 60, 59, 58! That's right, perfect! Keep it going! Alright, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. Fifty-four? Fifty-three? Fifty-two? Huh? Why aren't you counting, Nervalette? I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. Oh! All right. You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. Forty! Thirty-nine! Thirty-eight! Mr. Linney, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? 
Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double-checking the direction of the magic. It would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong places. For example, mid-air right above the audience. Even though he's saying that, Lenny doesn't seem nervous at all! Ah! What was that noise? Did you hear it too? Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. 25! 24! 23! What's wrong, Mr. Linny? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black in here. I can't tell left from right. N never mind the decorations. There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19! 18! 17! Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. Ten seconds and change is still plenty of time. Ten! Almost there now. Eight. Whew, swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait! Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Six, Honestly! Five! Four! Three! Uh, whoops! Two, that doesn't count! now, right? What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. <sighs> yes, that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... Then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance. And there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. Well, uh, the... the serial disappearances case? <gasps> That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! <laughs> I know. 
know. I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. Really, using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale. Did he really underestimate us that badly? I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linny, is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case. Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident. Oh, this all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? Now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right! How can Lenny do this? He was in the box on the stage the entire time! We could even hear his voice! Besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearances! He couldn't possibly mean catching himself! Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linny and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Huh? I just think that he... well, I, uh, think it might be a little early to talk about formally pressing charges. But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, my dear people. But what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, Traveler. You'll support Linny, won't you? After all, he was the one who helped you the first time we met. <laughs> then there's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I already had a duel the first time we met. But with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. <laughs> but draws really are the most boring possible outcome. So, no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And what better place to hold such a riveting showdown and decide the true victor than here, on the grandest of stages, the Opera Epicles! Huh. It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost last time. I understand. Charges have now been pressed. And as such, a trial is in order. Well, Traveler, seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment, I would like to ask you, are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? Very well. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build their cases and search for the truth. Linny and his troop are all potential suspects, and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big-shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm really quite looking forward to hearing it. Sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? Of course! Who wouldn't be scared after witnessing an accident like that? Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. How could this happen? And poor Cal. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? Good to hear. Thank you so much for trusting me. 
I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But, if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries, such that all that's left... is confusion. I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not, and I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. Which is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. Paima bought them when we were reading at the bookshop in the city earlier. Pretty cool, huh? Don't worry, Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. I think they look cute on you, Paimon. You have good taste, Lynette! <laughs> <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. I need to get back to my normal self. But with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. <sighs> Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, just leave it to us. Oh, uh, since we're going to start investigating, Paimon has a question first. Where did Lynette go during the performance? Ah, oh, well, I'm afraid that would involve some of our essential trade secrets as magicians. The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Linny. I suppose you're right. The truth behind our tricks is going to be important evidence that will be weighted during the trial. <sighs> Tis truly a pity. As a magician, our magic show is a work of art. We've poured countless hours and spared no effort in perfecting it. But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. Alright! Let's go have a look while the investigation teams are still here! Detective Paimon is on the case! Officer, how's the investigation going? Ah, I see. You must be the traveler that Lady Farina mentioned. Listen, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'd avoid getting mixed up in this whirlpool of a mess if I were you. Huh? What do you mean? Come with me and you'll see. The deceased is one of Linny's assistants named Cal. Even though he hadn't joined the troop long, he was hardworking and everyone generally liked him. The assistants are usually in charge of setting up and inspecting the props, as well as assisting with the show and keeping the crowd engaged. As you probably saw when you were in the audience, the water tank suddenly fell and smashed the box with cowl inside it. This is the real mystery. We've already searched the scene and were unable to find any traces of the girl. However, if you look carefully, the box was positioned directly under the water tank. The ropes holding the tank were then burned by the pyrotechnics on stage, causing them to snap. All these factors lining up so perfectly makes it hard to see this as a mere accident. If anything, the more logical explanation is that the whole incident was intentionally planned, and Linny is the most likely person to have access to all these areas. Are you both good friends of his? Uh, well, you can't say we're good friends, but we've known each other for a little while. So in just a short time, he was not only able to win your trust, but even convince you to act as his attorneys. I know there's no such thing as magic. The real trick of a magician is holding the audience in the palm of their hand. I've seen a lot of cases. And I can tell you that people 
are the least reliable kind of evidence. Sorry, I tend to be pretty straightforward. Just know that I'm warning you for your own good. Anyway, you may investigate the scene of the crime yourselves if you're curious. Who knows, maybe you'll be able to come up with some new evidence. The investigation team has some new findings. Turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all. See, I told you. What if the machine picked some big guy's seat? You think the murderer would have still made his move then? Sorry to interrupt, but we're helping Lenny and Lynette with their side of the investigation. What were you saying about the number selector? There's something wrong with it? You're trying to help them? <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? The lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. I'm sure you already know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. In other words, Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. Hmm. That much checks out. Linny reserved our seats for us, too. Bet you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Hmm. Even though it's bad for Linny's case, Paimon had better write it down. Whoever the murderer was, they must have made preparations well beforehand. People needed to register and reserve. Why would it be him? I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? We don't have too many thoughts yet. <laughs> then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first? The way I see it. And I'll start it with that loud thud. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud, but I suspect that most people heard it. It's just that everyone was awaiting the results of Linny's trick with bated breath, so no one paid it much mind. But now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Hmm, that makes sense. So, what do you make of it? I'm of the opinion that it may have been the sound of Linny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank, or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope, sending the water tank crashing down. But wasn't the noise we heard too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. Oh, well, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Hmm. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound?
So this is the rope that broke and caused the water tank to fall. Hmm. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? Hmm? Why are you suddenly so serious, Traveler? Whoa! Look! This bit is made from different material! Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left. Huh. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of material in it, then that means... Wait! Why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes! Why would it be... We all heard that noise, didn't we? Whoever the mer... This rope was obviously tampered with. Go ahead, have a look around. In the end, we're both after the truth. Lenny's still talking to the guards. It seems he'll have a lot of explaining to do. I think someone will be assigned to monitor us later, but that's all right. Hmm? Oh, this location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Sure, it's not like this is confidential information. We will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of a name for herself. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the Magic Show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her, and we have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Hmm. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, 
There really weren't any other connections between them. <sighs> okay then. I don't need to be so formal. If you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. It is of utmost importance that we get to the bottom of these disappearances. of you over here I've been keeping an eye on you for a while now huh you mean us that's right if I'm not mistaken you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth no and by the looks of it you're not from Fontaine well you're right on the more about that one but who are you <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Melus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details, never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now! But... how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever. Wasn't she? But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the Justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well... What's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. All right, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Um... Well? And why would that be? <laughs> See, Silver and Malus? I told you.
told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the Traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Wait! Since when did we become assistants? Hmm? Huh? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. Hmm. That's more like it. Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm. You have a point. <laughs> You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! But no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no! We're not leaving! We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case! Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes! After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. All right, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. We've checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Linny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. 
You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. So there was a passageway under the magic box! <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. I see. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley. All while the outer box would remain on stage, as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And, by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes and no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow! Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. 
and then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime, so Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. The floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why would there be water here? Oh! Hi, my nose! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh, that can't be. Trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. Oh! These are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Right! And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Ugh, this is so confusing! Paima doesn't want to be a detective anymore! This. Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first.
What is this place? It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Oh, you're right! Let Paimon write that down. Seems we're just about done investigating down here. Yes. Let's head back up. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So? What did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! Hmm... The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the Oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the Oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? Paimon thought Neverlet called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies, that makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties, or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Are they providing food? Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Just kidding! Just kidding! Paima will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. 
Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. Even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself! Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything! I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. I... Uh, Paimon was just thinking. Getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg whites, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway, give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... <sighs> True. None of the clues we've found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troop's members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing, though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> they are my specialty, after all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right! Paimon only counted three! Honest! 
Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. Wait, even you don't believe Paimon? Uh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach! <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Luce, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. Alright, thanks for your help, and for the snacks! <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial! Oh. Here! Take Pylon's notes! They should help you review the situation! Osmanthus whined. It's the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. Ah, oh, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. 
Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Linney is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on! Something's not right here! Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales! Could those mean... <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? The House of the Hearth? No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. <laughs> now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. <sighs> Good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. <laughs> hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Order! Order! Mr. Linny, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> P 
Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Granted. In that case, what is your request? Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Linney's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah. Sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Right, let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course, I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick, with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. 
Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense! Huh? Hmm... Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean! Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention. At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linney's perspective. Countdown began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cal's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the events? The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. Hmm, seems this won't produce a particular... Hmm. 
Hmm. Seems this won't produce. Hmm. Seems that. Hmm. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Ahem! <clears throat> Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! When the countdown started, Lenny did indeed go into the tunnel. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he felt something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent! words, you believe that he knew nothing of the incident? That's right! <laughs> My reasoning? If that's the case, then if Cowell hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true, Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Oh, they have a point. <laughs> that's right, you tell them! And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? Sure, we don't need to give this more thought. Paimon thinks there's something off here. Are you sure we don't need to give this? Wasn't in the box or in the time. 
tunnel. That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance. This means that when the crime happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best proof! Ha <laughs> ha! How do you like that? <laughs> well played. <laughs> to think you'd use such logic. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowell did, and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. No one entered or left the opera house. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. So there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equi- The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny- Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel, so there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? figuring things out? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. But it seems you're still far from the truth. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. And it's not like this. 
this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Lenny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The vase was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water! Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. <sighs> Must we really? I should think that of anyone. Your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things. Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased Cowell. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea? The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. You've got to be kidding! People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but it's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water, 
Does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowl was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. But we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all! Hmm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. The water from the Primordial Sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick, but was instead some form of triggering mechanism. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have something to do with this? I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and snapped. As such, the focus here is on the water and not the tank. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The water from the Primordial Sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. The water from the Primordial Sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered... Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have something to do with this? The water from the Primordial Sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. Makes sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. <sighs> oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Uh, 
Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <sighs> what a humiliation. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Vinny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowl then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the Primordial Sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Am I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Oh no! Mm, Paimon can't think of anything either! It doesn't look like there's any way around this! Uh, seems using the water as new evidence was too good a move! This have to happen now! I think we've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale! Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move... Huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Miss, I must ask you not to shout, and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on! Don't be hasty! I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate, and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick, one that can bring a young woman, who has disappeared, back in the flesh. Right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. What, what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. And 
佛了。Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me, and then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. But what? Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian. And I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there, and I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Linny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey, no wonder you look familiar. So you were the thief. Liddy even mentioned that you were pretty skilled. Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee, but then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nap me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? But I swear I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillianne's perspective. Hmm, seems... The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. The flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowl. Lillianne was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what one might expect of an experienced thief. Only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillianne back into the box. 
The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowl out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days! She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Talk about a sneaky thief! At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light! Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, um... Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <sighs> what? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that. She's like a deflated balloon now. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house, and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. Hooray, Linny and Lynette! Amazing! While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> Victory for Ace Detective Kaima! Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in Linny's baggage? 
Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know, and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which, when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The... And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. back now? That's true, but... Traveler, Paimon, please wait. Lenny... I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end, even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then, too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering... Would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But... I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, 
I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, She caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... <sighs> but wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person, and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood, and the knave standing there in the darkness. So, she'd already taken care of that guy. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Saritza to first use the Gnosis's power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So... She believes in that prophecy, too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us House members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So, from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. It's alright, I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the House, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. Hey there! What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? We're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now, right? Ah. Huh. I see. 
Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, I just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. You don't have to twist Paimon's arm! If Boss Navi is treating, get Paimon in! Oh, wonderful! In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. Alright then, let's have our fish!